Hey, hey everybody, welcome back. Another episode of Trudeau and Freeland. Let's listen to these fools. You, young Canadians, you make up the largest share of our working age population. You work hard, you're creating, inventing, and developing incredible things that are building the future of Canada. You hustle, you are the heartbeat of the economy, and Canada's success in the 21st century depends on you. Yes, it depends on us to get you out of Canada, out of office. Now, there are renters of every age across this country, and these protections and opportunities will be there for every one of you. This is just one of the things that we're going to be doing in this upcoming budget to build an economy that is fair for every generation. Thank you. It's now my great pleasure to introduce to you the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance. Oh no, here comes the wicked witch, guys. Get ready for her. It's Jeff Freeland. He doesn't need the step, but I do. Um, thank you very much, Prime Minister. Thank you so much, Harge, for hosting us here. Thank you to some of our amazing BC MP colleagues. It's so wonderful to see you. Um, and thanks. How did you get here today, Freeland? Did you take your private helicopter like your trip to Calgary? How did Trudeau get here? Did he take his private plane? The same one that took him to what, Jamaica? and actually cost the taxpayers $250,000 of flights. Above all, to the young people who are here with us, um, and especially the young families. Um, I heard a few parents trying to shush their children as they sort of chirped while the prime minister was speaking. I can think of nothing nicer to hear in the backdrop. Um, than the happy voices of young children. And I'm grateful to the- Well, if you guys didn't have a closed event and you had the public welcome, um, you probably would have some different voices in the backdrop. Children and the parents who are here. Because our message today is about you. A fair chance to build a good middle class life, to do as well as your parents or better has always been the promise of Canada. Dr. G right next to me, she's topless so I can't show her, but um, she was just going over like how much rent is. We're looking at what we could rent and it's like $3,800 and we're talking, I'm, I hope that comes with a hot tub. And we're, she's like, I, well, you just say it. What, what did I say? When I said, I hope we can get a hot tub. I said it, you'd expect to be able to get a hot tub for four thousand dollars. Yeah, you would you not expect to be have a rental with a hot tub for four grand? But no, and not in uh, communist Canada. Not in communist Canada. <laughs> Today, no. for too many younger Canadians, that promise just isn't being fulfilled. The hurdles are too high. Young Canadians are not getting a fair chance. Many younger Canadians had a really tough introduction to their adult lives. Millennials coming of age in the early 2000s endured the chaos and the challenge and the limited opportunities caused by the Great Recession. Many in Gen Z became adults during the COVID pandemic. What a hard time to enter adulthood. Sure was when you put breathing barriers on everybody and the kids can't go to school and we've all learned the bad effects from that. Gen, what is it? She said Generation Z now? Yeah, Gen Z, they so screwed up. There's still a bunch of Generation Zs. We just saw one in Havasu. They're very rare out here, but wearing a full face mask, like, like a ski mask, right? Walking with his two friends who don't have ski masks and and you just have a kid wearing a ski mask because they're now they're so used to protecting their face they're anonymous they don't want to be seen they want to be anonymous and this is a this is really weird it's, it's really messed up both generations have strived to pursue careers and start families at a time of high inflation high interest rates and really high housing costs i wonder why all three thanks to you guys <laughs> It is so understandable 
that many young Canadians feel as though the deck is stacked against them. Something deck. doesn't add up. It used to be that if you studied hard, if you got a job, if you worked hard, your reward would be a good middle class life. And that's exactly what it was or appeared to be so. Um, nobody really noticed the problems until you guys started slamming in your regulations and the G7 countries just tearing us apart. Big, making big government. Like, that's the whole point. Government is supposed to be small. It's not supposed to interfere with every freaking thing in your life. And now that you guys are big, interfering with everything in our lives, everything is going bad. It, we can't just, we can't, you know, it's so difficult to own a house. It's so difficult to afford food right now. It's so difficult to buy a new toy or a new camper because the prices are double what they should be. On and on and on. That was the equation. That was the promise of Canada. But today, younger Canadians can get a good job. They can work hard. But too often, that reward remains out of reach. Oh, I just read today like minimum wage at like, or um, they're paying $20 an hour at like the McDonald's here in like Havasu. 20 bucks an hour, right? I mean, was it a, when I was a kid, that was a, I was getting $8 an hour. So it shows you what inflation is so bad. And then somebody showed on the, um, I was on the expedition portal last night and reading and this one company was asking for, um, a person to do their accounting full-time full-time accounting right and the guys posted they're selling this vehicle oh it was north 27 you know the one with that really funny armadillo truck or whatever in the north 27 the rex one but they're selling it for one million dollars and he says for a company that's selling a million dollar f550 truck camper build they should afford to pay their or people more than it's at 18 to 20 dollars an hour for a full-time accountant with yeah. wanting a bachelor's degree. 18 to $20 an hour for a bachelor's degree and they're selling a million dollar rig. Um, yeah. And so it's just the irony is super strong. There are so many wonderful young Canadians, some young families here with us today. And I know that you, like young Canadians I speak to across the country are worried. You look at the way your parents live and you wonder, how will I ever be able to afford that? Holy crap, somebody get this girl out of the stage. Get her gone. This is so sad to listen to. A similar sense of anxiety exists among those of us who care about you. Have you hear listen to her voice? She's changing her voice. She's trying to like, she's like reading like a book to children, right? That's what she treats us like, like children, guys. She's reading a fairy tale. Uh, about our younger generation, your parents, your grandparents, your older sisters and brothers. We're worried too. We feel for our younger generations who have faced unfair burdens and who face unfair obstacles. What so many parents have achieved for themselves a degree of comfort, a degree of security. We want for our children too. We want your hard work to be rewarded oh just as it was for us. We want you to face the future with a sense of optimism, a sense of anticipation, not with a sense of angst. Nous avons atteint un moment charnière pour les millennials. All right, good thing we don't listen to her twice. While we're in the middle of the story, guys, here is that 2023 Ascender built by 27 North out of Springfield. What is it? Uh, Montana. Like I said, the price is 950000 to $1.2 million. They're selling, you know, they have several, I guess, or in progress. They're what it looks like. And the best part was the comment I said. Um, this should be criminal, selling million-dollar rigs and not even paying $40,000 a year to their employees. And then he posted up the ad from the website, we're hiring. Uh, I don't mean to be mean to these companies, but um, the irony is just uh, the economy and everything else. 
Jobs, we're, we are seeking a bookkeeper to manage all our finances. Your responsibilities will include tracking our organization revenue, expenses, and taxes, as well as producing financial reports. We'll also be responsible for auditing our books to ensure our records are correct. Requirements, a bachelor's degree in accounting, business, or related field. Strong working knowledge of accounting principles, financial statements, and accounting systems. Strong working knowledge of QuickBooks experience, blah, 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 organization. Job type, full-time, salary, 17 to $21 per hour. Send your things in to brad at thenorth.com. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Who can afford to eat at $21, the maximum pay for a job, when you can go down to the McDonald's as the kid and hopefully not have any rent and get $20 an hour, and they're still having trouble themselves to be able to afford, you know, a scooter or a mountain bike for 10 grand or whatever they, their passion is. If, I remember making $8 an hour and I had to save up for, oh, what did I do? I saved up for a few years at $8 an hour job and I got my 1984 300ZX for $2,600 Canadian, right? You know, so. And how old were you? Well, that was, I had that car by the time I was in um, grade 12 or just after grade 12. Grade. Right, so you weren't paying rent. No, no, of course not. Kids, no, I, yeah, them, but this is know, for an really? adult. This yeah. is an adult with a bachelor already. Like, and. Probably had to pay for schooling but, to go get that done. And, well, yeah, 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 I was like, lucky. My, my parents paid for my schooling. I had to pay for the books. And when I saw the books were $100 or $200 a book, and then the same teacher wanted you to get one book for the first semester and a different book for the second semester. And I'm like, this is bullshit. I actually, I went to the book. I'd go try to find the used books. And then they're like, oh, this is the, not the, there's new volumes every year because of this bullshit from these companies. They're going to make a new volume and change a couple words. So then the teachers then sell you, sell the students on having to get the new books because it's what they're teaching. And then I stopped buying the books. And so when the teacher was reading through the books, I just sat there and listened and um, I didn't have the book to study with. Maybe it made it a little more difficult, but I saved myself a lot of money and got myself a car. And it's more important to go to shop class and learn how to work on your car than it is to go to this fucking classes in the university sometimes. All right, guys. Sorry off sorry, uh, that little rant. Let's get back to Turdo. No, we're getting back to Freeland, the menace. Et la génération ah. Z da, est d'avoir cette Shut réelle up. chance de bâtir une vie au sein de la classe moyenne. And so, sure to the I'm younger right. Canadians back. here with us today, and to all of you across our amazing country, I just want to say your concerns are real. You're not making it up. Your <laughs> frustration is understandable. This isn't your fault and it doesn't need to be your future. What the hell is she doing? I know it's all your fault. I know it's all the Liberals fault. I know. So what is she getting at? She's going to play this little like secret little game where she tries to like, lure you in and telling her that they suck and it's not your fault. And then, and then what? Vote for them. We'll fix it now. Yeah. She's so insincere. She is so insincere. Mm-hmm. Super insincere. She makes you want to barf. Freeland wants to make you barf. <laughs> well, it's funny because I'm, I'm like, why does she think that the young, young Canadians actually care? Well, there's... If, if, if you know, she feels anxious for them. Like, why does she think that people care about what she thinks? And first of all, the young Canadians are the only ones voting for the Liberals, along with all the new immigrants, illegal or not. So it's their only chance that whatever votes they have left, you know, they're only got 20% of the vote now, you yeah. know, uh, according to the polls, they're going to be not more than doubled by the conservatives not even a chance but the young people the ones we meet the generation z was it right because otherwise um because <laughs> i'm on the end of the millennial and before it was x right yeah yeah the generation z they don't pay attention to anything and if you go and talk to generation z's and throw at a few trudeau or biden jokes um they won't bite or they'll bite and be like Oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, food's a little more expensive, but I'm going to vote Liberal Democrat because um, I like what they're doing for the environment. <laughs> and they're going to talk like Freeland and like, Hi, I'm a fairy tale. We have a plan to build a Canada that works better for you. You have a plan. Where you can get ahead. Oh, my God. Where your hard work later. pays off. Where you can buy a home. And She's where you plans, can realize yeah. the incredible they promise of our great country 
and get a fair My chance at middle like class life. In the sun. So, how will we do it? How? First, we are going to turbocharge the construction of new homes across the country. Turbo! Because the best way to bring down home prices is yeah. to increase supply and quickly. That's why we're cutting red tape and reforming zoning. So more homes get built and get built faster. We're also funding the construction of more apartments and affordable housing across the country. Over the coming days and in the April budget, we are going to launch a no holds barred plan to wrestle down the costs of owning and renting a home. We need to make real the promise of Canada for younger Canadians, and we are going to pull every single lever and push every single button to do Just like you ran over people with horses during the Freedom Convoy and froze bank accounts, pull every lever and bring in the Emergency Act, which is now deemed by the official Supreme Court judge of Canada that it was illegal, completely illegal, and now the government is being sued by everybody for the Illegal Emergency Act and how it affected their lives. And then the, we, the citizens, have to pay for your guys' losing in court. And, and so after ruining Canada, now we're pulling the levers and we're going to turn things around and help you after destroying you and destroying Canada. Canada needs to help Canada, but the Liberals aren't going to help Canada. And it's really frustrating and infuriating to listen to them to say, oh, now we're going to build 100,000 homes to make up for the million of immigrants we just brought in this last year deliver more housing without delay. One has 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 is not going to fix the million de immigrants a year. Nous avons apporté Shut des up. améliorations. Shut up, Freeland. You're making us angry. Let's get it past the um, Aide les gens ah. à payer. Generation. Right, to drive the kind of growth that will move the needle for Canadians, we're going to use the coming budget to build on our efforts to increase investment to enhance productivity and encourage the kind of game-changing innovation. We should probably just go to the question period. Do that. Go to the question period. We are here to announce robust new protections for renters and an easier pathway to well, home ownership to for people who are renting a place right now. More Gen Z and millennials are renting today than the generations that came before them. This is especially true here in BC. Here, almost 60% of Canadians between the ages of 25 and 34 are renters. In comparison, only 24% of people between the ages of 55 and 64 are renters. And we all know that renters are facing skyrocketing rent across the country. And we know renters need support right now. That's because you That's did it. why we're introducing a new Canadian renters bill of rights and a 15 million dollar tenant protection fund. The renters bill of rights, which we will develop in partnership with provinces and territories, will protect renters from unfair practices like rent evictions. It will make leases simpler by introducing a nationwide standard lease agreement and introduce price transparency by requiring landlords to disclose the price history of apartments. And the Tenant Protection Fund will increase access to legal services for tenants and support tenants' advocacy organizations. Because when renters' rights are supported, they have a better chance of staying in their homes and their communities. Just like you support our rights, the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, right? You really stand up for the Constitution and the Human Rights Act. Or how about like when the renters are in there and they're not paying their rent? And that, you know, how do you, like why would people, like I own a house and it's like, you know, there's so much challenge to having people renting it and there's, you know, is there any protection there too for like, you know, getting them in or out? Let's fast forward for the past years, but there is a need to do more. There is something fundamentally unfair about the fact that young people or renters pay $2,000 a month for rent, whereas someone paying $2,000 in their mortgage payments gets credit for that, gets to build their credit score, gets to uh, access more financing from the banks. 
But if you pay $2,000 every month in rent, or even more in in many cases, Uh, that doesn't count towards anything. That's not taken into account. Just to keep you in mind, in Canada, $2,000 a month will get you a basement suite, maybe one office and a den, Mm -hmm. you know, $2,000 a month for a two bedroom. Basement suite would is like hard to find, you know, like, but we're here in Arizona and who did we just talk to? Oh yeah, the guy for my cell phone repair. He's getting a whole house, three bedrooms with a garage and a safe neighborhood with no theft next to other beautiful houses with giant garages. Not too far from Lake Havasu, you could, they could bicycle to the beach for 2000, he said, right? What did he say he was spending? Uh, 1500. No, 1500. Oh my God, point made. Yeah, like what I was paying, when I was paying 1300 in 10 years ago or whatever it was, when was that? It feels like, yeah. Yeah, 10 years ago, or not even nine, eight years ago, I was paying 1300 for a basement suite with a big 750 square foot garage. And then, yeah, right before the liberals, in yeah, that was at the last of it, um, 2016. And then the liberals came in and rent went to shit. And then all of a sudden I got um, extorted out by my landlord because he wanted to raise the rent illegally by $500 all of a sudden like the next year. And I'm like, we have a lease for a reason. The lease says you can't raise it more than whatever it was, 2.1% or 1.7%. And then, so I didn't, I said, stick to the lease. We have a lease for a reason. And mind you, this was a person I lived with for many years and and I called a friend for a long time. I lived there for like seven years. Then all of a sudden, housing prices, everything stayed, rent skyrocketed and he extorted me for money. 500 more increase and I said no. And then the next day, he gives me an eviction notice saying he's gonna take occupancy of the unit and my phone is too hot, guys. It's getting too much bullshit, too much liberal bullshit. That's Ernie Racing News, guys. Yeah, this is what happened on Holbrook. You guys remember I had that garage on that house Anyways, anything, any final thoughts there, Doc? Not really. No, all right. Well, we're done with Trudeau and Freeland for the day. We're going uh, to have a suit to go. Uh, we're actually going to the campground. We can afford a campground once or twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers.